This is In Boot Camp, episode 22, Java, on Saturday, June 15th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB22. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? Good. The weather this week was just fantastic. It was about 75 almost every day, and we had some light showers this week. But for the most part, just you should have moved to Minnesota for this one week of the year you get like this. Yeah, there were uh, three days of below average humidity, which made it pleasant to actually do things outside. That it was. Yes. Uh, Come back again next year for it. Yep. Three days. That's all you get. So, how's class? Uh, class is winding down. Fewer and people, fewer and fewer people are showing up for class in person. Um, just there's a different mindset and feel going into the classroom now. Much more so, relaxed. So, on average, about how many people are attending each class now? Ten. Ten out of thirty, basically. Once upon a time, it was that. Yeah. But, well, like I was late to class on Tuesday. Um, like. I mean, I was I was going to attend remotely, and then I found out that we were kicking off pro- Group Project 3, and I'm like, oh, well, it would be really mean to my group members to have them have to view my misspellings and typos in Slack for the whole night. So I drove there because I can't spell. That is fair. That's also very considerate of you. Yeah. Um, it's just, well, you know how when you're in the, like, later on, like, if it was just like, hey, we're just talking about a special feature or something but just going back and forth in slack about an idea that isn't even hammered out yet uh, right it, it, it's easier it's to bad. do it in person yeah it, 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 then you can see how because sometimes somebody says yes we want to do this and no we don't want to do that but then you don't know how passionate they're about their no or their yes unless yes, you when see they their were facial say- expression when they were saying yes they were shaking their head no but people do i'm sure you've worked on group projects before you know how that goes oh i've personally have done that yeah but More on that at the end of the show. Let's talk about React instead, because uh, as I recall, in the last two weeks, you've been learning React. Yeah, and we're already done. Already done. Yep, already done. Wow. You've you've done React now. So, like, you've had roughly a week and a half of React time. So, surely you must have covered how to use Redux pretty extensively. Nope. Nope. Never, never mentioned, but never talked about. Mentioned, but never talked about. So, if you didn't learn Redux extensively, did you at least learn context? Nope. No context, no easy peasy, nothing, nothing to manage state or anything else. So if you didn't learn context, there's almost no chance that you learned hooks then, right? Zero. Nope, we didn't do it. So what exactly about React did you learn? That there are things called components and there are things called props and we move on. Um, Unfortunately, it just ended up being like that. So for 10 bucks, I bought a Udemy class and um, like... Three hours into it, we started doing the context API and stuff. I felt like I learned so much more from this Udemy course than I did from this. And so this was supposed to be the hallmark changing everything because the first day of React Night was just, okay, constant let. Like, like it was just getting us out of, you know, ancient JavaScript. Like this was supposed to be the turnaround for the class. Take us to the future. That's what I had hoped also. Yeah. Um, uh, you are disappointed, though. As I am, am I. disappointed for you. Uh, so uh, I, you, you also mentioned that you didn't get to cover much about state in, in general. Um, I don't know if you meant that in terms of state in a component or just shared state going up and down the tree. Yep. So we did like a click counter and that was about it. Yeah. So did you ever try any forms binding state to a form? No. No. There are things in React like Redux. Like, Redux is cool, but you don't necessarily have to cover it. And of course, it's sort of a, an advanced topic. Like, uh, a junior probably won't be setting up Redux all on their own. But a junior should know how to bind state to a form input. That's pretty critical. Pretty mission critical. Just looking in the future, we have Group Project 3 where we have to use reactive stuff. And so, just because we didn't cover it in class doesn't mean I won't have an opportunity to practice. Right. But uh, that also means you'll have to learn a bunch of those things yourself. Which is in some ways better, because we've already seen that the class can barely deliver content at this point. I honestly kind of agree with you. It does kind of feel like it's fallen apart a little bit. So, let's initialize Java. Yeah, and that's the big thing, because we get three days of Java. Now... So that's one week, by the way. So three days is one week. That's one week. Well, because of the holiday, it's spread across two, but that's just... We get three class periods on it. 
at most 10 hours. Like, if you think about learning a programming language that you've never used before. So everybody in the class should know JavaScript at some intermediate level now. And of course, there's roughly only 10 of you. So I guess everybody is kind of a stretch. Learning Java from JavaScript is difficult because now you have to learn types and you have to learn all this kind of ceremony that's not present in JavaScript. And some of the things that you can do in JavaScript just don't exist whatsoever in Java. How, how has that been going? Poorly. Uh, so the guy next to me never got Java C to work. He's never compiled any Java. Uh, the person behind me didn't even try. And the guy diagonal for me that's also in my group um, is just rolling with it. He thinks it's the coolest thing ever. He has never compiled to the terminal and stuff. And he just thinks it's so much fun and has been working outside of class on figuring out more about it. So, yeah, it's kind of fun. And, um, but we don't actually run any of the examples. Like the when we went through just the first night, we talked about compile, do this, move on with your life. We never touched it after that. Um, and when he shows us the next exercise solution stuff, he never runs it. He never shows us what it's supposed to do. Normally, you kind of show, hey, this is the exercise. This is what the end product should look like. It should ask a user for this and print out this. It's a little disappointing. Yeah. So they're just they're not they're not putting in the effort to actually have you learn anything at this point. They're just showing you and moving on. Well, yeah. So we were given we we they demoed uh like hash maps. They showed how to do that, and then so we were given an exercise. We're given fifteen minutes to you know make one, and then he's like, okay, we're behind, so we're not going to go over it. Just uh, look at the solution sometime later after you leave, and. I just feel like um, instead of, you know, 15 minutes of just solo look at a screen and get stuck, that, hey, let's do it together as a class. Because that's what the other instructor has done before. And that's what we've done in our class before. Like, when we are behind, we just do it as a group. And then he goes real slow and talks about it. And then everyone's on the same page. Yeah, that's not a good sign. That's not a good way to learn Java. It makes you think, and we'll talk about misleading class course syllabus stuff later. But it makes you feel like... The whole Java unit, the whole Java section was just there to say that you learn two languages on paper, but it seems like the way it's implemented in reality that they don't actually care about the second part of this whatsoever. Exactly. Just so you have one little more thing on your resume, like a little keyword buzzword. I don't even know if they intend you to put it on your resume. Like, I think it's I think it's disingenuous if anybody from this class after 10 hours of instruction puts this on the resume. Well. When I was making my resume months ago, I did. Well, yeah, but you knew Java already. Yeah, a little bit. So uh, earlier this week, you asked me a couple of questions. Um, so you asked about, you know, like, when when should I use static methods? When should I make a new class and then call methods from it? And so we talked about that. Um, I wanted to show you Spring because I told you about this kind of third method that's sort of in between making a new class and calling a static method. And um, I showed you Spring, and to do that, I had you run through the Spring Initializer, which sort of just makes you... It's kind of like Create React App, but for a Spring project in Java. Uh, and so you thought that was kind of cool to see how to make an API call possible in a different paradigm. Yeah, and I showed my professor, and he's like, cool, and then didn't care. Yeah, I mean, why, why would he care? Yeah. Um, but I thought that was really a really fun thing to show you, because I remember back way in the way in the day that I learned the same thing. I had never heard of Spring before I started working. So it was really fun to like kind of learn that process and see all the how all the pieces that I knew and from other languages fit together in this alternative paradigm that, you know, even though it's different, it also is pretty much the same. The Java that we first started with is very different from that. So when we started taking it in high school, we were learning Java 5. But like, like, do you remember our wrapper classes, like in auto boxing and boxing and stuff? Like, yep. we were our textbook still said, hey, if you're using Java 4, this won't work and stuff. And it's all this legacy stuff. And now that's not even a pretend thing. It's just we're so far beyond that in the Java world. And just some things have changed just a little bit. Yeah, and there's 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 a lot of great things. I showed you all about the uh, var keyword. Yeah, it really sh shrinks up the lines of code. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love var. I I have written so much code with var now that if I didn't have it, it would be really bad code. Um, 
earlier today you asked me what is the world and i thought what what yeah that's exactly what, what i asked and i had never heard of this terminology but apparently the world refers to the access level that is beyond class package and subclass it's literally everything i don't think anybody but oracle calls anything the world i think it's only here in this one document that you happen to read but i thought that was really funny it is from the official docs though yeah well unfortunately if something is official from oracle that means it's bad and you shouldn't look at it oh no it sounds like a little bit bitter maybe a little bit What's interesting about all of this, what we just talked about in the last couple of minutes here was all of these things that I showed you because I thought they were cool and I thought you would be interested in knowing them. We did over but pizza. I, yeah, over pizza, of course. But what I think is a bummer here is these are topics that your class should have covered in some degree. Like your class should have covered when to use a static method because that's important to know. Your class should have covered when to um, try making an API, try using Spring for it. It's the equivalent of Express. You might not have had time, and I agree, to go into tons of depth on everything, but it should have been but exposed. You 40 minutes over pizza, and it was just it was fun, it was quick, and it just it kind of felt cool to, you know, because I've only used Node for everything, and then to see that you can do the exact same thing, exact same route. You go to Slash on port 8080, it serves whatever you asked it to serve. Yep, and you get a hello world, it's easy. So that brings us to our next session. I signed up for this class last September, and there was only one boot camp option. It was just the coding boot camp through the University of Minnesota, through Trilogy Schools. And they kind of did a rebrand, and they've changed the material quite a bit since then. Now they have more options. They have a bunch of other stuff. So now they have, in addition to the coding boot camp, they have the data and cybersecurity boot camps. Yeah. And they also changed what my boot camp was. And before, they said all the wonderful things we do were outlined in this curriculum. And when you go to the website, it still shows what it showed back in September. But you get one week of Java. Um, and basically, it said in the curriculum that we would create scalable web apps, APIs, and services, take a deep dive into core Java and object-oriented programming, Build a foundation in comma build tools for Java projects such as Maven. We didn't do any of that. You say so you didn't learn about Maven? Didn't even talk about. Well, yeah, we so, did with Spring because uh, Spring requires it and stuff. Yes. So, so uh, Maven is similar to the uh, Node package manager, but for Java projects. Um, and to not learn about Maven is to to um, basically not learn about the world map when you live in Earth. Yeah. But this was week 20 and week 21. So we literally were going to get twice the time on Java. 20 hours. But now we don't. So right above uh, learning about Maven, it also says create scalable web apps, APIs, and services. And that 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 is something that Java is ex incredibly good at. And learning how to do that with Spring, for example, is really beneficial, especially in your job search because now you get to say like yeah i know node but if i also know how to use spring with java and many businesses will take that as a sign of a serious developer because oh that's pretty en enterprisey so not giving the opportunity to learn those things as part of the class is really reducing its value significantly yeah but when so if you are a person looking to take this class you'd think that yeah look we get two weeks to do this and it's there and I just kind of felt kind of bummed that it's not actually what happens. Yeah, it's it's extremely misleading, and I, I don't like that. And I think that just leads to more evidence for the quality of this program. And I don't know, I think I think it's getting harder and harder to recommend in the future. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm still so glad I take, I've taken this class. It's been eye-opening. It's been fun. I have zero regrets for this. But it is a little bit of a disappointment. Yes. So on the curriculum here, what's next um, coming up here? Computer Science Fundamentals. And so what does that cover? So what, Design what patterns, algorithms, computer science applied to JavaScript. So I, I, I don't know what those entail. Like, are you going to learn sorting algorithms? 
Well, we've touched on that. Well, well, that's the most classic computer science thing to do. I mean, we did that back in high school. I touched that even in my one year at St. Paul College. We went over that. It's kind of a waste of time to teach you about that. Like, I would rather give you two weeks of hands-on practical Java lessons versus two weeks of this computer I mean, science nonsense. The Wikipedia pages for Merge Sort, Bubble Sort, and all those other ones are just so beautiful concise well written and animated with these beautiful gifs yeah like i mean uh, it shows you how to do it line by line it's yes i don't know it, it's a problem already solved it is uh so uh, you also mentioned earlier that uh your java homework has become optional suddenly yeah <laughs> so we have a react homework due on tuesday which i should really open um yeah but then that's it. Um, they they made the Java homework optional. Uh, you could do it if you wanted it for something else for the TAs to have to grade. But he recommend not doing it and just spending more time on your group project three. Yeah, and I understand that. Like the group project thing is a bigger deal. But as we've all learned, there are basically no consequences for not doing work in this class. Yes, and I'm kind of thankful for sometimes i understand and everybody should be thankful for the ease in which they can get out of having you know something do a few times that's fine but there's also no there's no there's no threshold for success there's just an endless threshold for failure uh having having more things that are optional is kind of bad um i don't know like they clearly are not serious about the java stuff so i guess that all kind of adds up then yeah and i feel that that is absolutely true, that nobody cares about it. Yep. So, speaking of caring about stuff, I heard that you started on Project 3, Group Project 3. Yep. I'm pretty happy with my group members. I I need this to be my feather or my cap. I we're, This is going to be the big project that I put the most time into. And, um, well, we actually are going to deploy this, and it's actually going to be facing the internet, and so we can actually show other people, like, yeah, we did something that's actually real. Um, so we have a mass dot us. That's a great name for a meetup clone. That is a great name for a meetup clone, and it's um pretty clever. Basically, uh, we're we just as a group we decided what things we're gonna have in our app, things that we would be nice to have if we had you know it working, and then if we had loads of extra time things. So we set our goals and what we wanted to have done. We bought the domain. Um, right now, my big project is to get the hosting set up so anyone who pushes to the master branch will automatically push. I'm looking at Circle CI, um, and then I also have to try to figure out how to get a web server going for e email, an email server going, because we want to have your email is going to be your user ID, and we don't want to have spam accounts, and we're going to factor in with that, and then we're I want to have support at you know, a mass at us send you a little confirmation thing cool. that, to verify. Um, I don't know how to do that quite yet. So that is going to be this weekend's project because you can't really move too far forward without that. But I think it's going to be really cool. I'm hoping it is. We have, this is going to be the longest we've had to work on it because we don't have to have this done till literally the last day of class. So what do you, how do you feel about your other team members contributing back to this? Um, so we have an artist in the group. And they already have a bunch of sketches and stuff because they're going to have different themes for different things. So, like, if you were going to have, like, a if you wanted to create an event to say, hey, we're going to watch uh, the we're going to marathon through One Punch Man or we're going to do that. Like, she was she had these little chibi designs, like for these little logo people. And it, it, it adds it makes it like cool when you have stuff like that, because, um, you know, sure. how there's. It adds character to it. And I really mm -hmm. thought that was cool. So she's using her strength. Um, Dennis is just really excited because on his last project, he didn't use Passport.js. He used something else. I already forgot what it was, but he still used bcrypt or the password hashing thing. And so he's going to build off of what he did last time. Um, Tyler already decided that we're using SQL. Good choice. Yeah. I kind of hope I kind of liked SQLize. It made it a little better and stuff on my mind, but no, he's writing everything by hand, it looks like. Oh, um, that's that's not a good choice then. But as you know, everything can always change. So we started off using SQL and not using SQLize and stuff, but have you ever backtracked in a project? Oh yeah, many times it's awful. 
I mean, I can, when I just think about not using sequelites, like, how are you going to handle migrations if you don't have something to handle migrations? Yeah, that just sounds tedious and terrible. And this happened in the last uh, project where somebody said, oh, yeah, handling all the databases is just defining the schema. That's, yeah, might that's be, the first part. Yeah, that's, it might be a little me, bit more than it. that. Yeah. But you remember, the back end person does any functionality and any anything. Yeah, I remember your skewed definition of backend from last group project. Um, well, I hope it goes well, and I guess we'll check back in a couple of weeks, or even just a week, and see if anything's actually happened by then. Um, but I, I'm betting that, it, as as of typical most group projects in the world, um, that have ever existed for the last, oh, I don't know, about 2,000 years. One person drives, and then the rest do micro-contributions. That, but also, work doesn't get done until the last, I don't know, 48 hours. We are not doing that. I, I made it very clear that everyone is supposed to commit as frequently as possible, and we are supposed to work on everything and commit everything and do everything right now. Yeah, I know that's always the dream. That's I'm a the dreamer, dream in every, That's the dream in every business. That's the dream in every organization. That's the dream of every student. And then the crushing reality comes, and that never happens. Yep. Yeah, so again, I hope it goes well. We'll, we'll find out you know, in a little while. Hey, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at RhinoMar. And of course, on my recently updated website, which is now using Style Components. And it may have a few new features here and there. So go and poke around that and enjoy. Check out today. Where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me at MatthewButcher.com. And you can also find me on the People's tabs of the Nexus.tv. Wonderful. And of course, you can find us on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV, and you can leave us comments there on any episode that we've ever recorded in the past 90 days. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV, where you can uh, leave us approximately zero dollars and get approximately zero things in return. Sounds like a deal. It is a deal. Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.